Okay, so doing a camshaft swap, I have to get the nut off this pulley. And because it's a non-standard pulley, it doesn't have the holes you would normally use to hold the, the pulley. Uh, what I often do is use a, an old second-hand belt. Um, and just you can usually get them a, a two undo. I'll try the rattle gun and hopefully it'll come off. Okay, so we finally got the nut off with some heat and a lot of rattling, which is not meant to happen. And now we'll pull the cam pulley off. Oh, sometimes they don't like coming off terribly easily, and, but this one's sliding off nicely. I can get the belt off. I'll just rotate the engine over to top dead centre vertical so there's no load on the belt and it comes straight off okay don't uh don't do that to a belt you're going to use to turn the cams it'll destroy it so the pulley slides out there's a key which is just a locator the key doesn't actually uh, have any drive function because if that nut comes loose this all flogs out really quickly and uh, usually ends up bending valves and things so it has to be tight. Always lock tight the nuts on. The nuts are spec as a single use. Um, a lot of people I know who are very experienced reuse them. I'll probably reuse them on my own bike, but I wouldn't reuse it on a customer's bike. Uh, not long after I started at Moto Italiano, we, were, we had a bike come in that had been worked on somewhere else that had, had a nut reused and it was part of a court case. So based on the uh, professional paranoia, I always replace the nuts on a customer's bike. Pull the key out, which I just dropped. And this little backing plate. Behind the backing plate on some models, there's a washer. Um, possibly in the 900s, there's not. And then the cam's ready to come out. And this end is the cam cap, which I have previously pulled out. Slide it out. Pull the rocker covers off, and when, then we unload the rockers. And once we've done that, we can just slide the camshaft out. And because there's a camera here, I'm dropping everything. Okay, now we've got the rocker covers off. On these opening rockers, there's a clip on one side. Remove the little clip, I just use a little pick. Clip comes out, and that's out of the way. The clip came in with the Panther, also with the Peso engine in about 96, so 86. Um, it was one of the revisions I did on a Panther. It has a full width rocker and you have to pull a pin out to get the opening rocker out. But like that, you can just slide the rocker across and now it's out of the way. Same on this side. Pull the clip out. Slide the rocker across. Often you might need to move the cam a little bit just to get that slide. And with the opening rockers out of the way, the camshaft slides out. What I'm doing this for, this is a 620 camshaft that I had modified to fit in the earlier style head. This head has a bearing here and a bearing here to support the cam and one bearing in the camshaft end cap. The 620s and 800s, they got rid of the two bearings this side and put a single bearing in the middle here. So this camshaft had a, a boss about here somewhere and I had someone grind it off 
to fit in this engine because I wanted to try out. The 620 camshaft compared to the camshaft that's going into it uh, has much the same duration and lift but it closes the inlet valve 15 degrees earlier. And the idea of that is it traps more air. Um, in the 400 it was better up to about 8,500 revs and then not so good above that because it's a 400 and it's meant to rev to 11. It costed a couple of horsepower above 9,000 revs but my mechanical sympathy doesn't really have me rev things to 11 so easily. It makes my skin crawl, frankly, on this poor little engine. So we're going back to the original camshaft. The original camshaft in these is the R cam. And R doesn't mean race or anything like that, it's just R. This profile actually started, it was the second Panther style cam profile. It started in the F1 of 1985. Um, not sure why they changed it from the Panther cam file profile. The Panther profile is a little bit bigger than the F1, just a little bit, and I've had people say that it's a better camshaft, but for some reason they did this. In the F1s, this camshaft had an inline, inlet centre line spec of 110 degrees. When they went to the peso, it was retarded to 119 and a half. Um, people tend to go on about that being some sort of emissions thing. I don't understand why it can be emissions because there wasn't any emissions on these engines. I think it was because when they went to the peso, they had the longer manifolds with the Weber car carb on it. And because of the long manifolds, they retarded the camshaft to try and get some top end power back. Because on, on an F1, with, it has a, a Delorto 36 or 40 mil carb and a very short manifold. It tends not to hurt the top end, but the long manifolds would have hurt the top end. For that, they retarded the cam timing to get some top end power back. That's my theory anyway. Um, I don't particularly like these camshafts. I don't think they're that good a camshaft. Uh, for this engine, the lift is okay. On the 750 engines, the valves were too big for the lift these cams have. Um, and interestingly, these profiles are exactly the same as the profiles they used in all the four valve. There's no Quattro Strata engines. They just took the profile, put it in the four valve cam, and off they went. Putting the camshaft in, there's a very thin shim washer that goes on this end of the cam against the large bearing journal. So you put that on and you slide the cam in. Now between these two bearings, there's a spacer and that spacer tends to fall down and get in the way. So you put your little finger in, lift it up and slide the cam through. There is a seal runner just here. Probably should have shown that earlier. Seal runner, make sure it stays in place. These seals, if you are into here, these seals often get very hard over time and sometimes they can get so hard that they shrink a bit and they turn and you can just spin it in the housing. It won't really leak, it'll just spin. Okay, so put the cam thing back in. First spacer, backing plate. So I put the keyway, the key into the keyway, which can be a little bit fiddly. On the big block engines, there's usually a slot in the backing plate that helps you put the key in. But on these engines, small blocks there isn't. So now the key's in. Now the fun part is to line the pulley up with the key and slide it on. It's very easy to just hit the edge and then push the back of the key up and have it not go on properly. And then you do this five or six times. Okay, there we go. Got it the first time. I call that luck. Now, I'm going to lock tight this nut on. So I just clean the thread. As I said, because it's mine, I'll reuse the nut. If I was working on your bike, I wouldn't. I use the blue Worth Loctite, which is much the same as Loctite 242. 243, which is also blue. The nut doesn't want to go back on. Still upset from the last time. Okay, so get the tightening belt back out. Spin the engine back over to the mark. There are other marks on the, uh, usually on the timing gears 
and on the cam gears or cam pulleys that you can use to set them up but this engine doesn't have it so I'll just go with these and because there's no the opening rockers are across there's no load on the cam anyway If you're using standard pulleys for this, you can use the standard tool, which has the two pins. It locks into the pulley like so, and you use the nut, and it's all really easy. Just making this hard for myself. The torque spec on these is 75 newton meters, which we should be able to do. all this I might even hold the timing shaft the belts will usually support this load no worries was easier than getting it off. Okay, so that's all we do on this side. We'll put the cam end carrier back in, which is this thing here. There's also a very little shim. On here. They usually have, sometimes I find if you put it together, but before you put the pulley nut on, that this actually preloads the cam, in which case I usually leave them out if I find there's any drag. And I usually replace the gasket too. But once again, my engine doesn't get all the nice stuff. If it leaks, I have to replace it. Whereas if it's a customer engine, I don't want it to leak, so I replace the gasket every time. Ten newton meters from the screws. And our cam is done. And look, it's jammed. <laughs> Gotta pull it out, pull the spacer out. Good lord, I'm out of things going wrong on this one. So I'll pull it out, just making sure it turns in case it's something else. Take the little shim out. Do it all again. Let's 
Would have been much easier if the camera wasn't here. <laughs> no comment from Mike. Hopefully now it turns. It does. It, it can't actually float because the nut pulls the cam up against the two bearings in here. So it doesn't go anywhere, but that spacer can often be an issue. Okay, so now we've got the other camshaft in and we're to set the valve clearances. To check them, I usually start just by feeling what the clearance is on the closers. The camshaft spins at the moment, so there's no drag, so there's no interference, any of them. Um, and the way to measure initially the closing clearance is just push the valve down and you'll feel that as you rotate the cam you get to the open point where the valve is normally open on the camshaft base circle and bring it back up again and you can feel and hear just a little bit of clearance there but there's not very much at all. The exhaust and the inlet side. Depends on the difference in the camshaft base circles. If the base circle is the same, then there's no adjustment to be made. But if the base circle is different, then you have to make adjustment. And certainly it needs an inlet adjustment 